Now, before I go to quick poll, the next poll, can you recall the five factors? This is the time when we check as to how much attention you are paying. Can you type in the five factors? Which were the five factors that Google identified were important to team effectiveness? Can you recall the five factors? Okay, one is there, psychological safety. Great, Johnson. Anyone else? Dependability, good. Meaning, impact. Okay, clarity of roles. Fantastic. Structure and clarity, great. Thank you guys, thank you for paying so much attention. Good. Fantastic. Okay, so now I'm going to ask a question via a poll. In your opinion, which one of these five factors is most important? So you'll have these five factors listed in the poll. Uh, Mehul, could you launch the poll? Which one of these five factors is most important for team effectiveness? Yeah, Kevin says, ah, I think it's difficult. Yeah, I agree. Okay. So, the highest one is structure and clarity. So, my question is, most organizations do have structure and clarity. Doesn't your organization have KRAs, KPIs, or balance scorecards, or talent management modules? Then why is still team effectiveness uh, not predictable? Psychological safety gets number two, and then the other three are a tie, dependability, meaning, and impact. Okay, great. So let's see. Let's see. Okay. And here is so can you see this diagram? This diagram is a pyramid, and so these five factors are arranged in the form of a pyramid. So in a pyramid, what is the most important part? Obviously, is the base. So the most important factor out of the five is psychological safety. You remember Julia Rozovsky? She said that psychological safety was far and away the most important of the five factors and it was the underpinning of the other four. It was the underpinning of the other four. What does it mean? Without psychological safety, the other factors cannot happen. Psychological safety creates a culture in which the other four factors can either flourish or suffocate. So what distinguished good teams from the not so good teams was how team members treated one another. It was the group norms. When you have the right norms, you could raise the group's collective intelligence. And when you have the wrong norms, you could derail a team even if you have individually brilliant team members uh, as part of the team. Now, the sad part is that managers and team leaders are often aware of these dynamics, right? We saw it today in our poll that not many of us thought that psychological safety is that important. Have you been in a meeting where due to fear of seeming incompetent or let me just use the word stupid, you have held back questions, ideas, or giving feedback? Type yes or no. Have you held back in your team? Yes, Kevin, it does make sense. So the question is, have you remained quiet? Have you not expressed your opinions in a team? So obviously, if you're the team leader, you will express your opinions freely. But when you go into a higher meeting, do you hold back? And believe it or not, 
it happens a lot more times in organizations than people are aware of and then managers are aware of. We hold back questions, we hold back ideas, we hold back feedback. Uh, and what happens? Managers sometimes cause this to their teams inadvertently, unknowingly. So we might not even know that we are causing collateral damage as team leaders or managers. What happens when people don't speak up? Everyone loses. Every time someone doesn't open their mouth or share their ideas, you lose a potential learning and course correction opportunity. Over time, you lose a lot of these learning opportunities. And remember, the work is iterative. Strategy is trial and error. So over time, lack of psychological safety can cause underperformance, resistance to change, lack of innovation, higher attrition, and even unethical behaviors to achieve the goals. Without psychological safety, organizations are, so to say, leaving money on the table. They fail to utilize the collective. And so you hire the best people and yet you don't capitalize on their talents. So what a colossal waste. The collateral damage of lack of psychological safety is immense and managers and team leaders without knowing are causing immense amount of collateral damage on our teams. Now imagine a different setting. A team in which everyone is safe to take risks, voice their opinions, ask questions without, without fear of being judged. Uh, a team culture where employees can let their guard down and be themselves. So that's psychological safety. Innovation flourishes, change happens easily, engagement increases, and obviously because that business results improve. But a few managers really understand how the work environment, the team environment they create on their teams can make the difference between failure or success, between surviving or thriving. But there is good news also. Progressive organizations now understand the value of creating psychological safety. So it is one of the easily available sustainable competitive advantage. Top management and talent management professionals are taking note and integrating these practices uh, that foster psychological safety. And we are going to share a few of them today. So, yes, Kevin, that's right. Uh, neuroscience, Kevin says that fear is an obstacle to rational and higher level thinking. So neuroscience says that our cognitive ability is shunted or stopped when we are fearful because all the blood is directed to fight or flight. Absolutely right. So coming back to uh, our point, organizations have realized the value of creating psychological safety. Many organizations don't promote someone to a higher position unless they have demonstrated a track of creating psychological safety on their teams. So you don't get promoted until you show you have psychological safety on your teams. So venture capitalists now use psychological safety assessment as a tool to evaluate different candidates. What does a venture capital do? They decide whether to invest in company A or company B. So they have lots of other considerations and factors, but one of the key considerations is, can that team of initial promoters or founders get results? And when you do psychological safety assessment on those teams, uh, you can reasonably predict that the teams that have higher psychological safety level will succeed. Amy Edmondson's research have proven again and again that teams that have psychological safety outperform the other teams, even within the same organization. And this is true, not just for the frontline teams. It's even true for the C-suite teams. Uh, uh, Alan Malale at Ford is one example. Uh, Ray Dalio at uh, uh, the hedge fund he founded, uh, that is another example. So the difference in performance, it's in all kinds of industries. Private companies, uh, schools, governments can be explained by high or low levels of psychological safety. 
So in about last three, four years, the interest in psychological safety has just exploded, especially after the 2016 article uh, in New York Times by Charles Duhigg. Uh, he mentioned Google's project, uh, which they did in 2018, on the team effectiveness. And I think psychological safety is getting their uh, rightly deserved attention. As I said, it is the ultimate competitive advantage. And in the 21st century, it is as close as you can get to the magic bullet of performance, innovation, and profits. In fact, Google and other several studies have found that psychological safety is predictive. If you have psychological safety today on one team, that team will outperform the other team who doesn't have psychological safety. So because this is such a critical factor, I'll be doing an entire webinar on this topic and I'll give you the details a little bit later. So share your thoughts via chat box. Do you think organizations need to focus more on measuring and improve team performance? Yes or no? What are your thoughts? Yes, okay. What do you think? Does the management as well as uh, talent management professionals, do they need to focus more on measuring and improving the performance of teams? Yes, anyone else? Yes, no? What do you think? Okay, so obviously I think the answer seems to be yes for everyone. I don't think anyone would say no. Uh, yes, yes, all the way. Great, I think that's correct.